Hello everyone, welcome to video 4 of chapter 6. Here we will go through a second example of the cutting plane algorithm. Last video we summarized the algorithm, now we will simply follow it. Okay, the example is here. I want to minimize this z here under the following constraint which is listed and then the variables are restricted and integral okay so let's follow the algorithm so in this example we will need the help of our lp assistant okay so this problem we know how to solve and we will solve it in lp assistant neglecting the integral constraint solve it as a linear programming problem Okay, so here is the tableau, and that's the initial tableau, and then we, these are the two slack variables we added, and then we pivot here for this negative one, and we get the second part of the tableau, a negative coefficient, and we pivot here, and we get a third part of the tableau, which we see is all positive, so optimum is reached. So we see that x1 is 5 over 4, x2 is 5 over 2, and they are not integral. So we need to do the cutting plane algorithm. Okay, so since now this number, the fractional part is 0.5, is bigger than this one, 0.25, we're going to take this row and then we form the constraint. So let's go through it. So we look at all the coefficients a and look at those that are not integer. So we see this one is not integer and the fractional part is one third and we put a negative sign. And this one, the fractional part is one six. We take it and we put a negative sign. And then we add a new variable x5 and equal to the right hand side. For this number, the fractional part is half but then we need to put the negative one in, okay? So this becomes the new constraint to add. So um, this constraint, one should add actually on top of the last portion of the tableau. In the LP assistant, there is an option for you to do that, I will make a separate video to demonstrate, to go through this example, okay? So let's see, after we add it in, what we get. Okay, so now we add C1 in, and uh, so, so this was the final part of the tableau. Now we added another variable, the new constraint we put in, and then here we are going to solve this with... Uh, the dual simplex algorithm. So pick this row here, and then between these two, it's this column, so I pivot here, and then I get this part, and then I have all positive, all positive, so optimum is reached. Okay, so I see that um, x1 is 3 quarter, x2 is 2, x3 is 3 over 2, it's still not an integral one. So we need to do one more time. Okay, so we need to cut the plane one more time. So look at the first row and the third one. This has a larger fractional part. Let's pick that one. And then we form another constraint. So let's go through. What are the fractional numbers? We have this one, negative one fourth, and then three over four. So now here is something I put in red. Be careful. When you encounter a negative number, how do you write the integer part and the fractional part? Well, negative one-fourth would equal negative one plus three over four. The fractional part here is always between zero and one. Okay? So you will actually take three over four here and put a negative sign and then add a new x6, and then that's the fractional part from the b, and make it negative. So this will be the new constraint that you will add in. 
you will add this to the final tableau here, okay? Again, I will make a video on how to do that. Okay, now we add in C2 in the LP assistant, and then we solve. Okay, so we added in an X6, and we added in another um, constraint, and then use the dual simplex algorithm. This is negative, so I pick this row, and there's only one negative here, so I pivot here. Once you pivot, that's what it gives to you. So you see that the solutions x1, x2, x3, x4 are all integers. And then also these coefficients are non-negative. And the final optimal value is also integer. Okay, and then you can conclude. That's your final answer. You have the minimum of z is negative 3. It's obtained at this basic solution. You list it here. And then you know um, the original variables are just x1 and x2, or you can state x1 is 1, x2 is 2, is the optimal solution to the integer linear programming problem that you started with. Okay, so we solved the problem. So again, before we quit, let's take a look at the graphic explanation of the two constraints we added. Let's look at the first constraint, C1. We rewrite it. That's what C1 is. And now we want to express this in terms of x1 and x2. And then recall x3, x4 are just the slack variables. You can find the expression. So this is x3. And this is x4 from the original problem. You easily get that. Plug that in. Then you get this inequality involving only x1 and x2. One can simplify, collect like terms, and write out. And then here, actually, x1 exactly cancels, as you can see. And you only get x2. And you have x2 less than 2. Okay, and uh, for constraint C2... It is simply um, this one, and then that is the same as saying x4 is bigger than 1, but then we still need to express back into x1 and x2. Okay, so um, using x4 is this, then we have x4 bigger than 1. So this now is in terms of x1, x2. Then I can... Um, um, move 5 to the other side and get negative 4 and multiply by negative 1, change the inequality sign, get rid of the 4. This is what you get, okay, in green. So this constraint is in this cyan color and this is in green. And let's see what they do. Okay, let's look at the graphs. So the first graph is the regular linear programming problem without putting in the integral constraint. And we have the feasible region in green. You can verify that. And uh, the optimal solution is at this vertex, which is uh, the red dot, and with this value. Okay, That is the first one without any um, additional constraint we put it. And we see that this solution is not integral. And now the first step, we added in the constraint C1, which we analyzed is just x2 less than 2. So we cut this line through x2 equal to 2 and take the lower part. So this little triangular region now is being removed from the feasible region. So the feasible region is still in green, it's a bit smaller. And then you solve it with the LP assistant, whatever, and you find that the optimal solution is now moved to this red dot here with this coordinate. And we see that still, this is not an integer. Okay, so we um, now impose a second constraint, C2, 
which is in green here, um, darker green. So um, you can draw the line where this equals 1. That's become this green line. You cut through this line, and it's the area under it. Okay, so you see that comparing to this this region here, I removed this uh, trapezoid region from the feasible region. The feasible region gets a bit smaller, and then you solve this with LP assistant, and you find out with this as a my feasible region, now the optimal solution is this red dot, and it has coordinate 1 and 2, which is integral. Therefore, you have found the optimal solution, which is here, for the original problem, which is an integer solution. Okay, so um, um, it's a example that shows you you have to cut twice. And if your variables are more than two, it will be hard to visualize. But uh, in principle, it's doing the same thing. And uh, yeah, so there are other examples in the book. I encourage you to read it. And, uh, and that's all for this uh, subchapter. And next time we'll move to move on to another um, different algorithm. Okay, the following video will be a video on how to use LP assistant to add an additional constraint. Okay, so make sure to check that out.